Hi right, guys, George from BNB Campers. Just gonna do a handover video on your VW, um, and it's a 63 reg. So, start on the bonnet, you've got your air filter, sits underneath this box over here on the left hand side. Power steering fluid, sits just here, with this little reservoir at the very front. Brake fluid, just here at the top in this overflow reservoir, attached to the servo just behind it. Engine oil dipstick, is this one just here and your engine oil goes in through this cap just at the top. Washer fluid goes in through here and your engine coolant sits inside this reservoir here and you can see the level there on the side. Engine battery is this one just here um, and you can see you've got your split relay just here as well. So when you start and, start and run the engine, the leisure battery gets charged up from that as well. Your diesel filling point on the VWs is just inside here, just inside the passenger door. You don't need a key or anything like that to open that up, but you do need to have the door open um, in order to get to it. Although actually, <laughs> that's a lie, you don't. Uh, I think maybe it's the Fords that have that. Must have got confused. In fact, I think they normally do. I think they have something that sticks out of there sometimes, but uh, anyway. So that's your fuel filling point just there. And that's diesel. You can turn your airbag off from here if you want to. And you've got your uh, uh, sort of like bit there so you can get the uh, wheels off. Um, your locking wheel nut key um, is in there, just so you know. In the actual vehicle itself, I will carry on to, you know, to show you around the outside of the vehicle as well. Um, but to be honest, it's not going to be a massively long video, uh, just due to it being a reasonably small vehicle. Um, so you have actually got a brand new leisure battery down there underneath the driver's seat because the old one was a little bit old uh, and not holding a charge very well. So there's a new one down there. Sink up here um, does literally just pour the water through from your tanks, which we'll get to on the outside. Uh, and all you need to do in order to get that to happen is make sure you've got this pump button on just here. So as long as that button's on, you can then draw water through from your tap just there, assuming you've got some fresh water in the tank. Bit of storage in there. And your burner's up here. Um, again, I will get round to it, but when you turn your gas on, you've then got gas just here. Uh, you've got a manual piezo ignition. So your igniter is this bit here. Um, and when you push down on this, it basically makes a little spark. So to actually light this up, all you have to do push down and around to allow the gas to come through whilst pushing down in your piezo igniter and it will light up. So that's that. Uh, nice and simple. It's a Thistle Rose conversion. I was just trying to remember the name of it, but I've just seen a little sticker there. So um, Thistle Rose is the company that done the conversion. Um, your fridge down here is the full size, uh, I think it's Dometic. Yep, Dometic fridge. Um, so it's a 12 volt fridge only. And all you have to do to actually get this to work is turn it on and off from this little switch just here. So pushing and holding on that off switch there literally just turns it off and then push and hold again. And then all the uh, bits and pieces in the back there will light or will start working basically uh, and then cool your fridge down. So these 12 volt fridges really don't take very long at all to actually get going uh, and cool down. The only thing I would remember is that it does use quite a lot of power. So if you are going to use this, I would one advise you to use it when you're driving because then you know like i said your leisure battery will be constantly be being charged up when you're driving so it won't matter or keep your eye on the battery voltage which i'll show you how to do as well and if it does start to go a little bit low perhaps think about starting the engine up for a little while or putting a hookup cable into the vehicle which will then charge up your leisure battery straight away anyway so if you have a hookup plugged into the into the van it doesn't matter at all how much power you use in the back end all right but that's the fridge. So I'll turn that off. This little cupboard just here does give you access to your fresh and waste water tanks in there, but it is a hell of a lot easier to get to that from the others. You know, you've got two sliding doors. So um, if I just show you it from the outside, it's much, much easier. Um, you've got your port loo down here, <clears throat> which at present is in two pieces, but it's all there if you want to use that. So, uh, 
to the right of the cooker and all that sort of thing. I've taken off this piece of board just here, it literally just lifts off. Um, and all that's under here is your mains powered trip switches. Um, so if you do plug a hookup into the vehicle and for some reason any of these sockets around the vehicle won't work, have a little look in here and make sure they're all in the upright position, just like a household one. And your CBE fuse box. So it does tell you with a little symbol exactly which one does what. And uh, if you want to just, you know, if anything like this sort of 12 volt stuff stops working one day, have a little look in there and make sure they're all okay. But, um, you know, like I said, we've just done a habitation check and everything's fine. So it should, you know, shouldn't be any problems. But uh, if there is, that's where you can look. So this piece of wood literally just goes back in there like that. And it's got magnets, so it doesn't just pop open. It does have the magnets there to hold it in place. This button here does your light up top here, which is a nice little LED strip light. Your control panel down here um, <clears throat> couldn't really be much simpler. You just got basically got two light switches up here and your pump switch. So the pump switch just means you've got power to it. So it won't do anything until you actually pull that tap anyway. Um, but just turning that on means that you do have power at it. If there was a hookup cable plugged into the vehicle, you'd have this top right button on, uh, and a light, sorry, top right light. Uh, and that will just basically indicate to you that the charge is working. Top left shows you your engine battery voltage. Now I think it's going to show it reasonably low uh, because we haven't had it running at all. So there you go, quite low. <laughs> uh, but once you start and run the engine up for a little while, that'll go up. The next one down is your leisure battery voltage. So there you go, nearly full. And your fresh water level is there. So pushing this left hand bottom button, you look at the left hand scale and the two here, vehicle battery, leisure battery. But that's that. So I'm actually gonna turn those off for now because I don't need them anymore. Um, you've also got a couple of 12 volt points up here. So you've got an actual 12 volt socket point and also a couple of USB sockets there as well. And the last bit I want to show you is your heating system, which is the uh, diesel fed heating system. So if you push the button at the bottom, you get a green light coming on and that is quite literally just a fan. So what will happen is you'll just get cool air pumping out through this vent down here. So the bottom one is fan only. Okay, I'll turn that off and the fan will stop. The middle one, you haven't really got to worry about. Um, it's just the top one really. So you press on the top button there, you get a red light. And basically that lights it up on the diesel. The fan will start again. So the fan has come back on again. But after about a minute or so, you'll start hearing a ticking noise outside, um, which is basically the diesel heater drawing a little bit of diesel through from your tank. Uh, and then after not very long at all, you'll have heating coming out. So, that is quite literally how simple the heating system is on this particular vehicle. Um, to turn it off, just press the top button again, and uh, that is it. So the very bottom button is just for heat, for the fan only, the top one is for heating. And that is it. So, the, uh, the bed, when you saw the van at the show, if I remember, if I lift this up, it's actually much, much easier. So you've now, instead of having these weird kind of bendy rods of metal, uh, which I didn't really understand the idea of, you've got these nice strong gas struts instead. Um, so where it's got the strut at the back, it always has done. You've now got a nice heavy duty gas strut at the front as well. So when you pull the bed down, you can actually just do it from the front rather than having to, it was a bit strange how you had to use it before, but if you just put it towards you now, the whole thing, lays out flat and you can actually lift it up like that just by pushing it up it lifts one side up and then eventually pushes that one open so it's much much easier now but I just thought I'd show you that just so you can see that it's been sorted in the back just here you've got your jack and wheel brace uh, just there Various cupboards at the back here, so there's absolutely loads of storage. Um, this particular locker here goes right the way through to the uh, cupboards inside, so there's loads of storage in there. All of your paperwork for the vehicle, or a lot of it, is just in here. 
and the bottom one here is your gas locker. So all you need to know really is anti-clockwise around to the left turns the bottle on and clockwise around to the right turns it off. When you come to replacing this bottle, basically just pull the whole bottle out with the, with the regulator on the top included and then just twist the bottle off the regulator, put the new one on. When you get to doing it, you'll find out how easy that is. Um, in the meantime, when you do take it off, you can put this little cap back on the top as well. Um, you've got your dropout hole inside the locker just there. So if there are any gas leaks or anything like that, it will go safely out onto the floor. For the minute, I'm just going to turn that off. And then putting the gas locker cover back on. Make sure that these are both in the position they're in now. So facing like sort of horizontal. Kind of a bit easier with two hands, but should be able to do it. There you go. So you make sure that it goes on nice and flush like that. And then you just turn these, whichever way they'll go, like that. So now that's on there, nice and snug. Um, it looks like a little bit of a faff there because I have one hand. So, but yeah, you see there it goes on nice and flush. And then once that's in, put your cupboard over it. So it's all nice and, you know, you don't have to sort of see the big stickers and stuff like that, um, although they are there. You have got the sticker on the back which I would advise you to leave on because, you know, in the event of a, an accident or something, fire brigade or whoever can see that there's um, LPG or liquid, liquid uh, petroleum gas on board. So just make sure that you leave that one on. Um, hookup point. So if you do have access to using a hookup cable, it is really, really helpful. Uh, like I said, when you have a hookup plugged in, your leisure battery is completely topped up all the time. So it doesn't matter at all how much power you use, whether that be from the fridge or from the lights or whatever, um, if you have a hookup plugged in, you don't have to worry about the, the voltage. Inside this offside sliding door, um, you've got the little isolator here uh, for your cooker. So if you wanted to isolate the gas to your cooker, you can do just from there by turning it 90 degrees. Your wastewater tank and your fresh water tank, um, you can put this uh, bit back on there and make it a little bit more neat if you want to. Um, but essentially you can get to these, clean them out nice and easily if you ever needed to. Um, yeah, there's a cap for both of them if you want to close them up completely. And all of this stuff just here, you don't have to worry about that at all. It's all just the workings of the fridge. It's just the back of the fridge. Um, so yeah, um, that's about it really. I'll jump in the cab and show you the various bits and pieces uh, that we've got in here because the cab itself is pretty well the highest spec one I've ever seen. So if I just, I'll put the ignition on. So you've got automatic lights. Uh, if you want to leave it on auto, it will do its own, you know, it'll do it all for you. Heated and uh, electric adjusting mirrors. You can also go up to the top and it'll turn the mirrors up for you. We'll go back to the middle to bring them back down. Obviously you've got your electric windows, uh, all of your wipers and things like that, you can have that on automatic or whatever. Um, cruise control is all off this left hand stalk just here, so you can turn it on like that and then set your speed and all that kind of thing from there. Automatic DSG gearbox, so you've got drive or sport down the bottom for driving. If you have it in drive, you can go to the right hand side there and use this like that to change through the gears. I've actually got the same gearbox in my car, so it's a you know really really nice smooth gearbox. Next one up, neutral. So you need to if you're at traffic lights, you might just pop it down into drive to go off or back into neutral for that. Um, but if you are stopping properly, you do need to be up in park. Uh, otherwise, it will tear you off when you try to get out. Reverse, obviously, nice and easy from there. And you do have all of your sensors and things like that up there, telling you how close you are to things. Um, Handbrake just there on the left hand side so you won't catch yourself on it when you jump out, which is always helpful. You've got heated seats for each side. Air conditioning works from this button just here. Now the aircon won't do anything until your number is on one or above. So if you try it on zero, the light will go off and it won't do anything at all. So you can leave that on at all times if you want to. 
Um, you can turn the parking sensors off or on if you want to. You've also got the whole radio system there, so it's all the uh, the nice touch screen system. Um, you can connect your phone to the whole system if you want to. Sat navigation. So you can go through and choose exactly where you want to go. 12 volt socket at the top there and probably various other ones as well dotted around. Dotted around. Um, drinks holders and another 12 volt point in there. Hazard lights. Um, and obviously you've got all your steering wheel controls there as well. So you can go up and down the volume. Uh, and you know, if you're gonna go through and scroll through stuff on the, on the screen up here, you can do that all from here as well. So an absolutely ridiculous amount of <laughs> extras in the cab to be honest i've not seen one with that many extras before in my life um so you know really really nice vehicle that you've chosen to buy um reasonably low mileage actually as well for the vw eighty thousand. it's not bad whatsoever um but yeah so i think i've pretty much covered everything i can um if there's anything you think i've missed out or anything you want going through again just let us know uh, but otherwise i look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van thanks very much